morning. Pastor Jerry Scott here. August 6th, Thursday morning. Thanks. Thanks. I do appreciate the privilege of visiting you with these Coffee Break Reflections, the goal of them helping us to say yes to God. And I do hope that that is fulfilled in your life. I want to talk about uh, those memories that we have <laughs> and uh, see what God's will is for us. This week I was looking through an old box on the shelf I found in my closet and I came across a couple of cassette tapes. <laughs> Remember those? Wow, yes. Uh, we have a cassette tape player at church and so I took them there and I found on one of them a recording of my voice from a high school talent show in April 1970. 50 years old, my friends. The other was a recording the first time I preached on the radio in 1975. Both of them made me smile made me chuckle and they sent me off on a journey through 50 years. Yeah, I've had some high points, I've had some great things that have happened and there've been some low points and some failures. Made me think, we celebrate our wins, but what do we do about our sins? What do we do with those regrets, those failures, those sins? The first step in dealing with our failures and our sins is to deal with them honestly confessionally before God and where appropriate to confess and make restitution to those we've wronged. Our Heavenly Father, though, is what I want to focus on this morning, offers us in Christ Jesus both forgiveness and something called redemption, restoration. A favorite story of mine, probably my favorite story in the Gospels, is found in the 15th chapter of Luke, and it's a story about restoration. Jesus told it. It's about a man who, while he was still very, very young, made an arrogant, sinful choice. He rejected his father's love, demanded his inheritance, and went off to live on his own terms. Of course, he soon exhausted his resources and found himself broken, hungry. And the worst part of it was the shame that he now felt. Sitting there in a pig pen, and yes, those are Jesus' words, he was sitting in a pig pen. He formed a plan to go home, and he said, I'll just ask my dad if I can work on the farm. At least that way I'll have a place to sleep. I have a place to be safe. Don't want to be a son anymore. I realize I blew that, but maybe I can just be a worker. So off he went. And as he approached home, he was shocked to find that his father ran to meet him. He expected shame, but the old man didn't heap shame on his son at all. In fact, this is the way that the love of the father is described by Jesus. The words fill me up with emotion every time I read them. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him was full of compassion for him, ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Now, that's a Jesus story, but it's told for you and me. What he wants us to understand is our own relationship with the Father. God's not waiting to play a gotcha game with us. He's longing for us to turn around and to come home to his embrace again and again, no matter, no matter the depth of regret or the depth of our failure. For his love is deeper still, deeper than an ocean, the Bible says, beyond our ability to fully understand. Yes, the love of God is unfathomable. So you might be racing ahead and saying, so what you're saying, Jerry, is God rewards failure? No, I didn't say that. But God offers mercy and grace where there is true repentance. Paul, once known as Saul, remember him? Wrote a lot of the New Testament. He was once a man who vigorously and vehemently persecuted Christians, rejecting Christ Jesus. It was an ugly past, his actions worse than regrettable. But he found Christ and Christ found him and he wrote this, The grace of our Lord was poured out on me in abundance, along with the faith and love that are found in Christ Jesus. Here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Words written in 1 Timothy chapter 1. Yes, the worst of sinners found mercy and grace, that it might be an example to us all. Have you received the mercy of God? Beyond finding forgiveness, there's a second important step in dealing with the sins of the past. 
Once again, Paul writes this. He says, Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3. Oh, we never forget the lessons of the failures, but we can and we must leave the regret far behind. Friend, the past can paralyze us. You know that. I know that. We can become bitter. We can become unable to forgive ourselves or others. We can start to live fearfully, afraid we're going to make the same mistake again. Or we can begin to hide in shame, as if that singular choice is the definition of who we are. What does the word say? Leave it behind. Forgetting the past, straining toward what is ahead. Leave it behind. Don't be stuck in the past. Don't let the past mistakes, the sins that offset the winds, disqualify you and leave you feeling too unworthy to accept God's blessings. God's grace found in Christ Jesus is scandalous, and I use that word intentionally. Scandalous. It's beyond our explanation. It's beyond our sense of justice because it's based in grace. Here's a word from the word. I ask the Lord, the God, our master, the God of our Master Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning, that you might know him personally, your eyes focused and clear, that you can see exactly what he's calling you to do, that you can grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has prepared for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. It is endless energy, boundless strength. We can't make or save ourselves. God does both, making and saving, creating us in Christ Jesus to join him in his work, the good work he has gotten ready for us to do, work that we better be about doing. Yes, it's all based in his grace. So whether you're 15 or 45 or 75, trust Christ with your life. Let him forgive the sins and keep track of the wins, for his is the only judgment that matters when it's all said and done. What a glorious message. Thanks for giving me a few moments to be with you this morning. Let's pray together before we part company. Lord, I I found that old box of tapes and hearing a voice 50 years past took me on a long journey. And I'm so thankful that you're the one whose measure matters most. I thank you for forgiveness of the sins and I thank you that you're keeping track of the wins. I pray for my friends, Lord, that they would trust you with their life that they would trust you with the things that make them cringe and that they would trust you with the things that they would celebrate, that they would know the wholeness and the fullness that is found in Christ alone. Lord, as we walk with you today, lead us to life eternal and help us to, Jesus, honor you in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, that we may come to the end of this day with no regret. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Friends, great to share with you this morning. God bless you. Hope to see you again tomorrow morning. Until then, walk with Jesus.